my time in Terre Haute is just about up. My next stop is North Carolina. I'm out. Do you hear what I'm saying? With two fingers and a whistle. You see what I'm saying? I'm gone. That's just what it is. And it's not to hurt nobody, but I have a vision. I have, I believe that there are some great things for me out there. And if I stay stuck here, I can't do it. There are some things that God wants to do in your life that you can't do if you go back to Gary, Evansville, Indianapolis. You can't do it there. You just can't. But man, shoot. Because I'm, I'm going I'm to start my own grocery store. Really? Where you gonna start a man right next to my mama house? Really? Yeah, man, we're gonna have candy and um, juices and quarterback and chips, and that's gonna be my stove. Uh, I'm sorry, baby. Uh, I can't get with you. You got to have a bigger vision than that, because I don't want you being 70 years old and still trying to count up penny candy. Uh, you know, we, we had that penny candy man that was God old and uh, looked like Moses, the younger brother, you know, sitting there trying to count. How many pieces of candy do you want? 50. <laughs> and he'd take his, you know, hand and look like that. Like one of them things, you know, put the quarter in. Chicken. That's what his hand looked like. He was like, one. Two. Is this the flavor you want? What? Yeah, that's the flavor. Not really, but don't. Three. Four. You have to have bigger goals. What is your goal? I mean, I really would like to know who really want to get out of here. I mean, for real. I ain't talking about AWOL out. I'm talking about discharge out. I'm talking about right way out. Now, I see a lot of hands up. That's sweet. I'm so happy. Yay. Now, how many of y'all really got here the right way? Uh, well, let me help you real quick. Let me help you real quick on how to get out of here, on how to get out of any situation that you're in. The first thing that you need to do is go to a mirror and look at yourself. And I know that might be scary for some people. <laughs> so walk up on it slow. <laughs> And look at yourself. I, I've done this, so I know what I'm talking about. Look at yourself. And you need to tell, you need to verbally speak out to yourself what you want to do in life. So that not only can you hear, but you can see yourself saying. Because I can sit here and say, I want to be a millionaire, I want to be a millionaire, I want to be a millionaire. I want to be a millionaire. But until I really see myself saying, you know what, I want to be a millionaire and I can see myself doing it. I'm not going to do nothing but talk. And see, a lot of people are talkers. They're not enough doers. Man, shoot. Man, you think you did it, got some money, man. I'm, I'm going to have me some money. What you going to do? Sell shoes. <laughs> you ain't got no bigger goal than that. What, we need to find what goals do we have? And are we willing to do what it takes to get the goal? Or are we going to let people come and, and do things that's going to distract us from where we want to go? Anybody want to live in the ghetto? Not one hand. You know why? Because a lot of us are from the ghetto, and we know what ghetto life is, and we don't want to go back to ghetto life. We want to have a better life. Ain't nothing wrong with the ghetto. Well, go live it. I don't, I don't know. I'm done with that lifestyle. I've done that. I know it is to have my life turned off. Been there, done that. Not have heat in the winter. I know what that is. That's not fun. It's not cool. I've been there. Not to have money. Go outside and pray your car start if you got a car. Or get that bike and ride out. <laughs> and what we did was we had to we had to walk to school. See y'all, y'all, some of y'all can plan from walking over Buggy Bridge. We gotta walk. What you want to taxi him up? <laughs> we had to walk. And our walk was nothing nothing pretty. Because we had this slender, because when I went to middle school, I went to Spawn School, and from the Renaissance where I lived, it was a nice little trek to get out of my complex. Then I had to cross two streets. I almost got hit by a car, go around this small little bend, 
the other about that wide, and you had people, I mean, groups of kids, all walking that way. Not only that, you had snow. And so they didn't really get the snow off the road that well, but when they did, they all piled up on the sidewalk. So now you got this little path that you're trying to go, and I forgot to tell you, it's a river right next to the sidewalk, so that if you fell, you would have fell over the railing, down the little steep thing, and fell into the river, and you'd have drowned and died. And you said, done all that. But you know why I did that? I did it because in my mind, in my heart, I said, well, I want to go to school, first of all. Second of all, I want to become something. So I got some elements right now to tell me, dang, it ain't going to be that easy. But I was glad to get to school. When I finally got to school, I was glad to get there. I wasn't thinking about, dang, I'm going to have to walk back home in this. No, I'm just glad that I made it through, and, and now I'm here. That's what I, I want you all to get out of here. I want all y'all out of here. If I could right now discharge all y'all, I wouldn't. Ha, ha, ha. I'll tell you the truth, some of y'all ain't ready to go. Hello. Ooh, that's mean. I don't like him. Die, whatever. Some of y'all ain't ready. Some of y'all ain't mature enough yet. Ouch. Ouch. And you know you're not. Anytime somebody step on your toe and you ready to get into a fight, you ain't ready. Anytime somebody just say, your mama, and you just ready to flip out, you ain't ready. Anytime somebody just tell you go sit down somewhere and you go and have a fit, you ain't ready. You're not ready. You're not mature enough. You're not ready for that. But when you, you, you know when you know you're ready? When people can say crazy stuff to you and you can just shrug it off. When people can act stupid in your class and you can ignore them. When people can say all manner of stuff about your family and you can walk away, that's when you're ready. I have people say, I'll tell you, I, I, used to, I told you I had anger. I keep telling y'all that. And y'all, I don't know who praying, but they used to say my grandma, but that's all you had to say, and I would be on you like white and rice. I mean, I was trying to choke you dead. I was trying, I was trying, you know how you choke somebody, you their eyes like they're going to buzz out their head? I, that's what I was looking for. I wanted to see the popping sensation, you know. I wanted to see the blood vessels come out your eyes, and I just wanted to see you gasp for that. I wanted to see that. But it came a point to where I thought to myself, what about my grandma? All you said your grandma is a nice woman, dressed nice. My grandma is dead. So I can't keep care. And I carried that around for the longest of time. Uh, a chip on my, my grandmama died back in 82. I was still fighting by my grandmama back in 89. And y'all still wasn't born. 89, you was just old. I was still trying to fight because somebody said your grandmama. But one day, God came to me and he said, you've been doing this too long. You've been acting this way too long. And I'm here to tell some of y'all, y'all been acting this way too long. You've been acting stupid, you've been acting dumb, and God is like, it's, it's time out for that. How many of y'all, and let's be honest, right, let's be honest, and don't nobody, see, we're going to find out where it is right in, in the building. How many of y'all really think y'all mature enough to walk out this building right now and go home? All right. I'm glad some people are fed up with it. And I'm not going to say and tell you that you can't. But I will tell you is, you got some work to do. Until you get discharged, there will be people always out here trying to stop you from getting to where you want to go. They, I call them haters. You got people that set you up. Don't. And one thing, the big mistake y'all make is y'all tell people your discharge date. You know, I'm going to be getting out September the uh, 12th. Really. <laughs> and my PO said, you know, if I keep it clean, you know, I'm out of here. <laughs> September 12th. It's September 7th. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so all of a sudden, things start happening. Staff come up to you, well, we heard that you had this in your room. What? No. And they go up in there, do a room search, and all that said, now how did that get there? <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> I swear, I did not, I did not do that. I did not have that. I don't know how they got that. Stuff start happening, people start lying. 